We are here today with Tara Stone of Stone Claims Group. And Tara, can you tell us a little bit about what it is that you guys do? And give us a little bit of history on Stone Claims Group. Yeah, hi, Carrie. I'm excited to be here. My name is Tara Stone. I'm the CEO of Stone Claims Group. We are a public adjusting company that specializes in commercial properties. So many people don't even know what a public adjuster is. A public adjuster is an advocate for the policyholder. The insurance company has an adjuster that works for them. As an association, you have the ability to hire an adjuster that works for you. And that's what we do at Stone Claims. We're public adjusters. So you work for community associations and for unit owners? No, we primarily work for community associations only. Um, if there is a loss and the board asks us to represent the unit owners, then we would represent both the association and the unit owners. But our primary function is to represent the board of directors whenever there is a commercial claim. When you think about it, you wouldn't go through a $2,000 collection without having representation to go through a complex commercial loss that can be tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, or millions of dollars. You absolutely want representation on your claim. What, at what point do they get you involved? Do they get you involved before they file the claim or do they get you involved when they see that there might be a problem? Oh, absolutely. That is the first time that you'd want to get us involved when even if you think you have an insurance claim, because the reality is many times you'll call your agent or call in a claim and you'll come out for something that wouldn't be covered or that might be for under the deductible. So we'll come out for free and do an inspection to let you know, is this a covered box? What are the pros and the cons of filing a claim, what you can expect through the claims process. And if it's something that is a loss, we'll make sure we put your best foot forward and document the full extent of the damage and locate the full extent of damage to make sure we maximize the fair value of the claim. Okay. And so do you, do you ever find that what, with what you guys do, do you guys work directly with the agent too? You, you help out in that way. If they say, well, our agent's also helping us. How does that work? Cause I know that when you, sometimes when you have too many hands in the pot, it kind of messes things up. How do you guys work that? We consider the agents a partner in the claims process. However, the agent's responsibility is to sell the policy and provide the coverage that we make sure is implemented in the case of a loss. Um, it, I worked for the insurance companies for 15 years and I can tell you there is the sales department, then there's the claims department. They operate on two different islands. And while the agents can definitely have a huge impact in the process and they need to be involved as part of the team, it's not necessarily under their umbrella to be your adjuster. They're not out there climbing on the roofs. They're not roof specialists. They're not door and window specialists, a lightning specialist. Their expertise and what they're licensed to do is to sell you the best policy for your community. What we're licensed to do is to negotiate the claims process. Well, you guys spend a lot of time reading coverage forms, I would think. I do. I go to sleep at night reading policy. It's um, what I love to do because the devil is in the details, right? Where the comma is, where the semicolon is, uh, <laughs> things are covered. Every, typically, I shouldn't say every, but the majority of condominium policies are manuscript policies. They're custom written with different endorsements based on different states. So it's very important that we get the policy, read the policy, and do a thorough and detailed investigation to make sure we uncover all of the damages and present them all to the insurance company. I was telling someone the other day, I had a lightning claim that they called us out to take a look. They didn't think it was that going to be that big of a deal. The insurance company told them it was $3,000. We came and I noticed some of the metal sticking to the ceiling and it, it looked odd. So we brought in some specialists, did some more determination, found out they were painting the building. The lightning protection system was taken apart when the storm actually went through. No one even realized it caused damage to the structural integrity of the metal support ports and oh. a three million dollar claim oh my goodness so you you never know exactly what kind of claim that you have until we really do a thorough and detailed investigation 
we also had a lightning plane that was out at the beach. They thought it was a $6,000 pump. We went out there, we didn't find $3 million worth of damage, but we found $36,000 worth of damage. We were able to kind of trace lines. Same thing happens if a car runs into the gate or you have a water loss, like water losses, for example. You do not want to be filing multiple water losses on your policy. So we want to come out and say, hey, okay, this is what the condo is responsible for under 718 or you know, if they're a townhome, 720, whatever it may be, this is what the unit owner is responsible for. A lot of time our involvement on the front end really helps put the cam in the position where they're not trying to interpret policy and explain this to an angry unit owner. Right, so, they're not the agent, exactly, yeah. Exactly, and in your question, like who do we represent, we are an advocate for the association first and foremost, because sometimes there can be conflict between the unit owner and the master policy. Right. So that's why we represent the unit owner only per the request of the board. Where does your fee come from? Does it come from from the insured side? Is it does the insurance? I would think the insurance company is not going to pay it, correct? No, they absolutely do not pay our fee. Are they? Frankly, don't really want you to know about public adjusters. <laughs> right. Exactly. They're like, please turn this video off now. Don't become educated. <laughs> <laughs> and we're like, who is that tall blonde girl? We have an insurance claim. We got to look her up with Stone Claims Group. Um, absolutely. So we charge between 10 and 20 percent, depending on where we get in the, involved in the loss, um, the complexity. If we're fronting a lot of the costs, it's one of the things we do very differently. Uh, many times we'll front expert costs on a contingency basis because the board doesn't necessarily want to front the engineers to fight the insurance company's engineers. Um, so we charge between 10 and 20%. There's never a time in the entire history of us being public adjusters where our clients haven't been very happy to write the check because at the end of the day, they see the value that we bring to the table and the increase and just frankly, the ease in going through the process makes our fee worth it. Um, every good thing comes with a cost, so nothing in this world is free, but we're about as free as it could come in the fact that we're gonna maximize the fair value of the claim, get you paid everything that you're supposed to, go through the process knowing that um, you did everything you could for your community to get every dollar that you're owed. That's well, great. I appreciate for you for your time today and tell, you know, walking us through all that. And I'm actually looking forward to creating some content with you guys and tell Ross, he did not get out of being on camera at all. Is he still in the room? He's right here. He's right here. here. <laughs> Do you want to get on camera for a second? Come you did on. not get out of being on camera at all. Oh boy. Your profile is on the cam matrix. You need to spell your name for them so they know it's you. Nice. My favorite job in the world. I, I do it about 98, 98 times a day. <laughs> It's U-R-O-S, but it's pronounced with a little silent H at the end. So it's Urosh. 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 It's really Urosh. Yep. I know my mom was complicated. You know, she <laughs> loves complicated names. What can I say? I but have a sister, you... so they had a deal between my dad and, and her. My dad was going to pick my sister's name, which is Tammy. <laughs> so, oh, how funny. <laughs> <laughs> right, so. Tammy, they could have yeah. called you John or Tom or something, yeah. Or Ross. Or Ross, yeah. <laughs> that, well, pronounce your last name for me. Vasilevich. So he's, oof. You really need an accent just to pronounce your name, honestly. You said, you, you said you're from Alabama. That's a foreign country, right? It is a foreign country. We, we're below the Mason-Dixon line and everything. Are you kidding me? <laughs> no, honestly, with all the cams and... You know, some of the property managers I've had a chance to really get acquainted with and, and build a relationship like Tara was talking about. It's uh, honestly to most of them. It's it's really Ross. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it's, yeah. And Ross. It, it's, it's just easier. And it's like, oh, my gosh, do I put a little nickname on my on my signature line? Do I leave it out? Yeah. But they all know me by now. We're the tall public adjusting people. Yeah. Yeah. Me. You are. You guys are tall. Okay, so I just wanted to remind you to, first of all, I wanted everybody to just kind of see you in person. We're going to do some podcast stuff. 100%. I mean, on, on our end, I'm not sure if it's pertinent to, to this time frame or, or, or this special podcast, but we do have two CE courses. One is on navigating through the insurance claims process. It's very educational. We've had a lot of our 
guys from our company do it in different areas. We just did one at, at the Space Coast Association. And uh, we also have the second one, which is not so traditional, but it's about negotiation tactics. And it's about really using the power of the language, the power of, you know, body language and verbal language, understanding different visual or audio cues from the different person and really getting the best results out of a conversation with with anyone. You know, you're yeah. at your association, you're at your property, you can have, you know, many, many conversations with many different people that could be really important um, regarding their outcomes. So I think that's a really fun one. We make it interactive. You know, Tara and I sometimes get on stage and kind of go back and forth between like specific examples. You know, we talk about different styles and techniques yeah. um, that we got in terms of negotiation and how to get the best. Like she said, it's it's never really the, the adversary is not really the person across from you, even if there's emotion involved. It's really just the system and understanding the game, each person's role within that system and, and how it contributes to different ways. So okay. yeah, we, those are two fun courses. So I, I definitely, the second one sounds very good. In fact, something that I would love to schedule for January if you're down for it. Um, We're down but, for it. So. All right, well, we, we got our first one in, so. Yay, well, thanks you guys. I look forward right. to doing more with y'all. Thank you so much, Gary, you're great. Appreciate thanks. it. Bye-bye.